Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. I'm Kevin and today we're going to talk all about crab. Dungeness crab season has ended, but rock crab season is in full force for the whole year. And I want to show you one of my favorite things to do with wild caught crab. Let's go. Now before we really get into this video, I just wanted to say that I will be guiding, once again, introductory level free dive spear fishing in Monterey starting this weekend as well as the weekend of the 17th and 18th. If you want to get out and learn the basics of free dive spear fishing, honestly, it is such a good time. I'm also going to be guiding the 23rd and 24th in Los Angeles County. We'll be doing a little entry level free dive spear fishing as well as diving for sea urchins and other underwater delicacies. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there are only a couple more good solid low tides during daylight hours in 2024. So if you want to get out during peak seaweed season and get out harvesting for edible seaweed, maybe doing some poke pulling for eels, maybe going for rock crab, you don't have a whole lot more time to do it. So please hit me up if you're interested in this, catchandcookcalifornia.com. And with that in mind, let's talk all about crab. More importantly, what to do with your crab when you catch it. Now Dungeness season is closed, but... During the Dungeness season, I love going for this species. Dungeness crab can be so much fun to dive for, they're fun to throw snares for and drop hoop nets for, and we do it all. But honestly, diving for these things is so much fun, and they are so incredibly delicious. So I do spend a lot of time scouring the bottom on a single breath hold looking for this particular species. Sometimes you find them in the sand, sometimes you'll find them sort of nestled on the edge of the rocks, but in many cases you find them in great abundance and they offer some exquisite freediving opportunities. Yeah, one of my favorite things to do. But pulling hoop nets can also be a ton of fun and very, very rewarding. Some of these colossal sized dungies can come up in incredible abundance as well. But all good things must come to an end, including Dungeness season. And rock crab offers all kinds of opportunities for the rest of the year. This is a brown rock crab that my buddy Chan is holding up as we were coastal foraging and poke pulling. Sometimes I like to go out and dive for these as well. In this case, it's a different species of rock crab. This is a red rock crab. Both of these can be quite delicious. They have a bit of a stronger flavor. Most of their meat is in the claws, but they are still quite good and definitely not a resource to overlook. Just because Dungeness season is closed doesn't mean we don't go crabbing. We just kind of mix it up a little bit. And one of my favorite things to do with rock crab is mix them with a little bit more spices, a little bit more garlic, green onion, and other goodies. And that way when it cooks up, that stronger crab flavor kind of mellows out as those flavors marry with all of the other herbs and spices. One of my favorite ways to do this is just to boil and eat crab, but I also love cracking crab, removing the meat, and then I'll freeze it for later. Sometimes I get lazy, I eat as much crab as I can, cook the rest, and then just toss it in the freezer, and then later on I'll thaw it out, crack it, and remove the meat. While Dungeness crab shell is not particularly thick, rock crab shell is quite a bit thicker, actually more similar to a mussel shell. So when I crack it, I don't use the cracker in the same way I would on Dungeness. Instead I pick it up and just smack the crab shell using the side of it almost like using a hammer. I'm creating a hairline fracture and then twisting the shell to remove the meat. I don't want to pulverize that shell because I don't want to drive a bunch of fragments into the meat. Once I get all the crab set aside, it's time to mix up the other ingredients. Eggs, finely minced oregano, white onion, a little bit of carrot, a little bit of red bell pepper, green onion, garlic, oregano, some breadcrumbs, some Old Bay, and a little bit of butter. I mix up most of these ingredients in a bowl, and then I add in all of that delicious crab, making sure that I didn't leave any fragments of shell in it. That rock crab shell is thick, and you do not want anybody chipping a tooth. Heck, even if they don't chip a tooth, it's just a bad mouthfeel, and it gives people a bad overall experience. Now mix this up thoroughly. You may have to crack a third egg in there, depending on how much crab you added, and I added a ton in here. After this, I mix in some panko breadcrumbs. You could mix in any other kind of breadcrumb as well. It just acts like a binder. And then I top it all off with a little classic Old Bay. 
This gives it a nice, savory seasoning and balances out that more potent rock crab flavor. I mix this up thoroughly so that all of these spices and little chunks of goodness are all evenly distributed, and then I let it just sit and all those flavors marry together. So the trick here is a, a healthy mix of butter and oil. You do a little bit of oil, a little bit of butter, keeps the butter from burning, makes it nice and roasty. Get a lot of good flavor notes that way. I want it on a uh, medium low heat. I want it to burn. I want to give it some time so it's going to cook thoroughly, but I want that nice brown sear with that nuttiness from the butter in there. Finish them with a little salt. Ketchup and tartar sauce. A little bit of sliced lemon, and that's it. That's all it needs. Yeah. Crab cakes, baby. All right, a little bit of lemon over that. And I know it doesn't make any sense, but <clears throat> for some reason, I have an exception for tartar sauce. I know it's got mayo in it, and I despise mayo. I'm just not even going to think about it. It's my only exception. A little bit of tartar sauce, a little bit of ketchup. Mm. Mm. There's nothing about that that I don't like. The texture is amazing. All this crab texture going through it, but it's got a nice sort of crisp sear on the outside. I mean, you can see it, that beautiful golden brown. Now that it's in my hand, I gotta eat it. And then you get that nice little citrus blast coming from the uh, the lemon, and then all the herbs, all the veggies that are in there, they're perfectly cooked. It's just beautiful. Mmm, not even kidding. I made this at a party one time. Two years later, I bumped into some of the people that were at that party and they're like, oh yeah, we remember you. You're the guy who brought those crab cakes. <laughs> it's a crowd pleaser. The last thing I wanted to say about these is it's a great way to extend a smaller catch. So if you go out and you think you're gonna get like five rock crab or you know you think you're gonna get two or three dungies and you've got a few friends coming over that want crab and let's say you only catch one, this is a way you can kind of bulk it up, spread it out, and at least everybody gets a delicious appetizer. The last one I hope you enjoyed this video I know it was um, short hopefully short and sweet hopefully you learned something and uh, if you did please like subscribe thumbs up all that good stuff share the video leave a comment I love hearing back from you and until next time keep the old ways alive